Welcome back, guys. My name is Jason Salyer, and I've started doing a little bit better job of, of prepping on medical supplies. Here's just one small section of where I keep some stuff. I've got others and other drawers and pantries and things like that, but I've just got basic bandages, band-aids, alcohol prep pads, some ibuprofen, things of that nature, anti-diarrheals, um, and then one really, really, well, Listerine's a good one too to have around, but another really, really good thing to have around is gonna be some hydrogen peroxide. I've got quite a few bottles here, and again, I've got some more stored upstairs. Well, like I was saying, I think it's a really good idea to have some hydrogen peroxide on hand because it's just really, really useful for lots of situations. Now, um, it's not as big of a deal right now because, you know, hospitals are open, things are going okay, despite all the pandemicness that you may or may not believe uh, is happening right now. Um, but anyway, um, if you, let's say you get a cut on your hand, your foot, your leg, whatever it is, and it should happen to get infected. Um, that's, that is a big, big, big deal. Um, I would have died without the use of antibiotics. Um, I was stung by a stingray on my foot and that sting, that wound got incredibly infected. My foot swelled up. It looked like, it, you know, it looked like my foot was trying to eat my toes. It was really bad. I let it go way too long, which is, you know, my stubbornness. But anyway, um, so without the use of antibiotics or something like that, I, I probably would have died, lost my leg, foot, whatever. So um, I'm a big believer in things like that. But if you can prevent infections from happening in the first place by using something like this and just taking a little bit extra care, if you get a cut, a scrape, a wound, whatever, and let's say it's that grid down situation, pouring some of this on an open wound can be a really big deal and can potentially save your life if, um, you know, just nip it in the bud before the infection sets in. Um, another really use, good use for something like this that I've heard, I haven't had experience with it yet, but we're going to find out today is, uh, is my dog, Maggie. Hey, Maggie, <whistles> Maggie, here she comes. Come here, Maggie. Come on, Maggie. Come on, Maggie. Good girl. Maggie smells horrible. <laughs> she got into a, a, a little dispute the other night with a skunk and oh my gosh she smells so bad but she's so good so she's had to sleep outside um in the poor cold the poor thing but uh but she doesn't seem to mind that bad i don't think but anyway so uh, i've heard that using tomato sauce uh, peroxide baking soda all those different remedies uh will cure her of her <laughs> disgusting yeah i tried giving her a bath uh when she first got sprayed with it just a regular bath and it was blinding i mean my eyes were watering it was so horrible so we're gonna throw everything every home remedy that there is at this situation and see if we can get that mangy mud over there <laughs> from smelling so terrible this is the on three special remedy for <laughs> for skunk spray uh i'm gonna throw all this stuff on maggie here and hopefully at least one of the one of these things or the combination of these things is going to do the trick we've got some pure baking soda some ultra shine uh a dish soap there and a cat move it cat and uh some hydrogen peroxide and some organic of course tomato paste and i really hope well for maggie's sake if she ever wants to come back inside the house one of these things or all these things is going to work we'll see Nice. Get a little watery tomato slurry here. Oh yeah, that's nice. She she knows she knows something's up. Come on, Maggie. Come here. You smell terrible. <laughs> Good girl. Come here. I got you. Oh yeah, you smell awful. Tomato mess. No, ah, uh, come here. Get back in here. Come. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Stay. Stay. All right, we're gonna try the tomato paste slurry method first. Oh, that's so gross, Maggie. You are disgusting. I'm gonna need a bath after all this. Hopefully I don't smell like skunk. A little hydrogen peroxide. 
Stay girl. There we go. Oh yeah. Doing it all. I've actually had really good um, results using hydrogen peroxide. I had an ear infection one time and I put a little um, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide kind of lay on my side, put some hydrogen peroxide in the ear and let it kind of bubble up. And it cured that, that ear infection. I had a really bad earache um, and it fixed it. Now I'm not a doctor and I'm not telling you to do that. Consult your physician um, should you choose. But I'm just saying from personal experience, it worked really good for that as well. Stay. No, 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 no. Look how sad she looks. Okay, let's let that cook for a bit. Stay. Ah. I think we're gonna go ahead and hit her with another, uh, another round of the tomato sauce, tomato paste here. Good girl. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. We're gonna let her sit there for a bit. Give her about five, ten minutes maybe to marinate, and then we'll give her an actual. No, stay, stay. Then we'll give her an actual bath with some suds. What do you say to that girl? Hmm? Alright. Come on girl. Come on. Come on Mickey. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good dog. <laughs> good girl. <laughs> Let's see if it actually worked and got her a little less stinky. I could still smell a faint aroma of a pole cat, but for the most part, I think she is okay. Ugh, still a little stinky. But anyway, was it tomato sauce? Was it just the bath itself? No, it wasn't the bath because I already gave her a normal bath and that didn't work. So was it tomato sauce or was it the hydrogen peroxide and baking soda I, or a combination of all three? I don't know, but. She smells way better. We might let her inside, maybe. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you leave us a comment, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next time.